I'm going to go ahead and start the recording. Um, welcome folks who are here for teaching and learning. Thank you for attending. And for those of you who are here for the, our combined UX um, call, thanks for coming a little bit early today. Um, I did start the recorder because we usually record the teaching and learning calls. Um, just in case we finish up with some of the error messages beforehand and um, people might uh, be interested in watching the recording. I'm not quite sure how much longevity it'll have if we're just doing error messages. But anyway, um, we usually start off with a few announcements, but I actually don't have any um, big announcements at the moment. So does anybody else have anything that they would like to announce before we get started? Okay. Happy Groundhog Day. Oh, happy Groundhog Day. Yeah, that is today, huh? And it's pretty cold in most places, I would imagine. Another blizzard going through this weekend. We got about 24 inches. Wow. Easy. We had last weekend um, the, the coldest weather in four years here in Florida. For us, it was pretty cold. No snow here, but I think maybe in some very northern parts of Florida, there might have been some flurries. Um, so our agenda today, if you want to go to that document that's linked there in the chat, that's the one um, that Sean created uh, for our UX uh, combined call. So we'll, we'll just use that one for today so that we're all working from one document. And um, the focus of our time today is going to be um, looking at um, SAK 46356, and there's, that's linked also in the chat. Um, and uh, there was a request on that one to come up with some more human readable error messages for the variety of things that could potentially trigger an error. In, um, in the assignment setup screen. So when you're going through and, and you know configuring the settings for an assignment, um, there's a number of things that trigger a warning, but it kind of takes you to the top of the page every time and doesn't really tell the user why they encountered the warning, at least not in a uh, very detailed manner. So um, so we were going to see if we could identify all the different things that would send a user back up to the top and try to come up with a more informative error message um, for each of those. So there were a few other elements that were in the JIRA um, that are kind of separate from what we're doing today. Right now, we're just kind of focusing on the error messages. Um, so, so that's sort of our main task today and uh, and we've got overflow because UX usually meets at 11. So we decided since this concerned both groups, um, we were going to do a combined call. So um, so we've got a two hour block. We may or may not use the whole two hours, but um, we'll just see how far we get. So um, so that's sort of the plan for today. I see Tiffany's on the call. Tiffany, did you want to add anything since this JIRA was your JIRA? So maybe you want to elaborate a little bit. Okay, Tiffany doesn't have a headset connected. Can you hear me? Hey. Yep. Um, so, I mean, the, the main point about this JIRA is that the um, error reporting is not accessible and the error messages are super confusing. Um, I don't actually see the error message that concerns most of our instructors listed on this um, add edit messages. So it's, it's actually a message when the assignment has already been posted. Oh, no, there, there, there they are. Um, yeah, okay. The please make a correction or click the original button again to proceed. So anyway, our users see this message sometimes. 
and uh, they get confused as to what they're supposed to do, and they think they can't edit their assignment after the due date, or they can't edit their assignment when there's submissions or whatever. Um, and it's also really bad for screen reader users because they're kicked back to the top of the page. The, the messages are not um, set to have the alert um, tag on them, so they're not read to screen reader users uh, necessarily. So um, yeah, it's, it's a big problem with the accessibility, but also just the error messaging. So part of that JIRA was about making the format of the messages more meaningful, as well as um, making the text more meaningful. So that rather than, you know, staying on the same page, kicking you back to the top of the page, having a nebulous error message, you have instead a dialogue that pops up to say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, proceed if there's absolutely no errors because it's just past the due date, for example, you don't have an you know, an error necessarily, maybe you just want to extend the due date <laughs> um, or the late uh, submission date, whatever, except until date. Uh, so, you know, if there's no actual error involved and it's just a confirmation dialogue, I think it should just pop up, say, you sure you want to do this? You know, yes, or, you know, cancel to be able to make whatever change it's suggesting might be good to make. Uh, but I think that the text of the messages that is determined to be used will also require knowing whether or not these other um, fixes are going to be implemented as part of this. If no other change is going to be made except to the text and adding the alert tag to the existing messages, then I think it's going to be more problematic than if, um, if the actual uh, change of making it become a different kind of dialogue is implemented. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, unfortunately, this group can't really change the other pieces of it, <laughs> but we can write error message text to at least provide um, the developers yeah. with uh, kind of pre-written messages yeah, so, that would make sense. So here's the thing. The question is, what are we going to be asking developers to do here? Because if we're asking them to do everything in the JIRA, then our text of our messages needs to be targeted to that point. So if the message is popping up in an alert window, you know, an alert dialogue, rather than being just text thrown on the page like it is now, uh, the text could be more meaningful than than otherwise. Does that make sense? So if if your problem is that you've just clicked the post button and the um, the the assignment has its due date in the past, it should tell you in the dialogue, click the post button again <laughs> to confirm, right? Are you sure you want to do this? The due date's in the past. If yes, click the post button to confirm. So the dialogue should, whatever message or dialogue is, should be smart enough to know what button was clicked and to provide information to how to deal with that. And preferably, if there's a particular field that's in error, place the user's focus in that field for them to fix it. Well, I mean, certainly it would be ideal to have the um, the message appear kind of near the item that was in error so people aren't scrolling up and down, because I agree that's very kind of annoying, but. No, that, that's, see, that's also a problem. If you don't place focus properly and the error message just appears sort of next to where the error is, then you might not see it at all. Um, it really needs to be, sort of a pop-up uh, alert, I think, and not just stuff on the page, because the stuff on the page is not working for our users. Right, uh, but the, the message itself, I would think, 
could be the same. Like if, if it's, you know, this date is in the past, please click post to continue. Um, that would make sense at the top of the page or near the post button. It would be preferable to have it near the post button, but I think the message would be kind of the same in either location. My understanding. Uh, well, uh, again, if it's a pop up message, then it doesn't need to be on the page unless you cancel out of it. Um, okay, so how would you like to proceed? Because we were going to meet to go through the messages and come up with text. But if you don't think that that's going to be useful, we can certainly spend the time on something else. Um, but I don't know that, I mean, maybe Matt or Sean be able to address the um, focus and the pop-up issues. Um, but that's not something that the rest of the teaching and learning group would typically dive into because we're not developers. I, I think that maybe different several pieces of different text would be needed if we're just kind of nebulously maybe going to change just the text, maybe going to change the functionality so it's actually more accessible, which is the goal. Um, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, well, so which of the, the pieces of text would be most useful then? There's a list that was um, kind of taken from um, some of the, the code for that area um, in assignments. And um, Sean's suggestion was that we spend a few minutes kind of looking at that to see which of those would be relevant. And there may be others that aren't listed that might be um, added. Um, but uh, if, if we want to take a few minutes to look at that, and, and Tiffany, since you've looked at it more closely, maybe you can identify the messages that would be of particular importance. So, um, well, first of all, accept submissions deadline is not what it's called in assignments. It's the accept until date. <laughs> so that that's a pretty easy one that could be done even in uh, fixed, even in um, message bundle manager. Um, the, the the biggest problem is click on the original button again to proceed. And it's not smart enough to tell them what button they ought to be clicking again to proceed. Um, and it's also not clear that those are not actually blocking dialogues, they're confirmation messages. So it sounds like to me that we have different levels of things that we could address here. Um, and it sounds like what we're trying to do first is decide which ones we want to tackle during this meeting. Um, as far as the accessibility of the, the message goes, there are some easy ways to address that. Um, and then there are some more complex ways to address that as far as like how they're implemented. And they all have different varying levels of uh, usability outcomes, I guess we could call them. <laughs> uh, so I think, Tiffany, you kind of mentioned one of them already. So the the messages aren't getting reported to screen readers because the page is refreshing. The message is appearing on the page, and, and it's essentially uh, not obvious to the screen reader users that the message has appeared until they go back through the page and find it. So uh, roll alert on that. Um, message container is the is one way to address that that concern and, and that's pretty straightforward and and uh, pretty accepted and uh, also done elsewhere in in Sakai um, what you're proposing with the um, message pop-ups would be a little bit more complex as far as implementation goes because that isn't um, 
used elsewhere in assignments. You did mention the tool that uh, a similar convention is used in Gradebook. Um, they use a little bit different technology, so um, there would be a little bit of additional work to get that to work in assignments. But um, pretty much anything is doable. <laughs> we just have to decide uh, what steps we want to take um, for both addressing it and then addressing it in the way that we want to do it or the, the best way, um, knowing knowing what our resources are. So um, as, as Wilma said, we, we don't necessarily need to fix it in this meeting, but we can maybe make a decision on different ways that we want to approach it and propose those. Um, what I heard from the discussion from last meeting uh, was that people want to review the messages that appear there, uh, which is why I started to compile this list. Um, and I had somebody else take a look at it too, and their, their uh, GitHub is linked off that uh, the second link there. Um, so this uh, is in a comprehensive list. Um, so I thought we maybe want to start by crowdsourcing it using the group here to go through that first link there, the assignments properties link, which is where all the messages come from in assignments, and pick out the ones that we want. Um, so we could either do that as a group, or we could do it um, uh, independently and just add it to this page. I thought by picking them out, because they're kind of scattered throughout the 1,200 lines of that file, um, that uh, we would then at least have them in this Google Doc that we could then discuss the wording of it. Um, Sorry that I wasn't able to get a comprehensive list before this meeting, um, but uh, hopefully we can put our minds together and, and come up with an approximation of the messages that we're going to discuss today. Um, so that's what I would propose. Um, how we do it is up to the group, um, but uh, um, just to give you a little background on what this file is, um, in case it looks a little foreign to you. Uh, so properties file is, is just um, a way that we do languages in Sakai. Uh, this is the English, English version of this. This is all the messages that appear in the UI in uh, assignments. Uh, the first jumble of letters is uh, the key. And so that's what the code calls. And then after the equal sign is the text that appears. And what that allows us to do is to have different translations so that that key can be used. Uh, um, and then different files for different languages have different uh, values after the equal sign. And then depending on the language set for the site or the user, then the, uh, the text appears um, when that key is looked up for that particular language. So that's how it works. Um, so you can kind of ignore the stuff before the equal sign, on the left of the equal sign. Um, it may give you a few hints, but sometimes it's um, like abbreviations or concatenations or something like that of, of where it's being used. But sometimes it can give clues. Uh, but we can focus on the right-hand side. Uh, this uh, this file, as I said, is, is 1,200 lines. A uh, bunch of those are spaces in between. So it's not like there's 1,200 messages here. Um, and a, a bunch of these are used throughout it. So some of them are for uh, students, uh, what students see. Some of it is what is shown on the grades page. So this doesn't uh, this doesn't mean that all these lines are specific to the add edit page, uh, but there are quite a few of those in there too. So um, I started going through this before the meeting and uh, I've got about halfway down, which is what I've posted in the Google Docs of what I pulled out. If any of those are incorrect, please just highlight them and then we can remove them. And uh, how, how do you guys want to uh, crowdsource this? Well, I think if we're going to keep the current format of how it is and just add the alert to it, the role alert to it, the first step would be to break out every one of these messages that says, please make a correction or click on the original button again to proceed into two separate keys so that we can have a unique message per button clicked. So. For example, if the button they click is post to say, you know, please edit the date uh, or click on post again, something like that. But it tells them what, you know, what what the original button is, because that's the big one of the big um, <clears throat> blockers for our users when they see one of these messages. I 
I'd also suggest having something really clear in the wording. It might be just making that, uh, you know, click the original button again, but my instructors sometimes get confused as to what is an error they can click through and what is something that they need to fix before it can actually really be published. Yeah, that's that's the other thing is making it clearer that these are some of these are um, blockers and some of them are not. Okay, so should we start by identifying those then? You mean by identifying blockers? Yeah, by... I'm not um, sure what you meant by those. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. By separating it into those two categories of what what is an error that would stop you from uh, saving the page or what would be something that would click through, could be clicked through. Should we start by dividing it up into those two categories? That makes um, sense to me. Sure. And yeah, that's a good point, Christina. In the chat, she's got um, errors need to be addressed or fixed um, by the user, and then warnings can be, or kind of FYIs, and it could be ignored. So that could be something else that could be addressed with this issue is, is we do have error message types and we do have warning message types as far as the banners go. So uh, we, those well, could be more uh, better stylized as well to provide better visual indication of the two distinct uh, groups of yeah. messages. But the problem is here it actually blocks save. So the warnings here also block save just as the errors block save. Um, so unless the format of how the message is delivered is changed, I think that we can't, we shouldn't change the, the color of the text because warnings you may just kind of pass over and not bother to interact with, right? And, and then you'll lose your content. And we've had that happen too, where users just get to the page, they're like, it didn't save when I left the page. <laughs> it didn't save because they encountered this this confirmation message that, uh, that do you have an example of one of those messages yeah it's, it's the, um, when you're editing the posted assignment and the due date set in the past the um, students have submitted before the except like, submissions data set in the past any of the ones that say click on the original button again to proceed basically i mean almost all of those are um are messages that can be clicked through because they're a sort of warning reminder alert um but so is that gonna kind of, like filter the messages for us into the two categories essentially if we did a find for that phrase that would probably give us all of the warning blockers mm -hmm. as opposed to blocker blockers. Yeah, I think so. I think that's correct. And I don't know if there's a, a way that it can be handled to to not stop it <clears throat> from saving when they when they do that, other than you know making it like a pop up confirmation dialog. Um, and that's why I was suggesting that for for these types of messages in particular. Because that's where they get the most confused that they can't um, do something when they actually can just by clicking that button again. If you search the assignment.properties for the word click, then that will give you the most of the text that requires you to click something again. There are 27 matches. Adam, do we want to paste those into the Google Doc just to kind of have us on the screen? Give me a moment and I'll do a grep in order to get them out. Awesome, thank you.
while he's doing that, um, I have a question. So these are, are things that if you didn't want to correct, if you did want access, uh, to accept submissions in the past, let's say, you could just leave it alone and hit continue or proceed. Um, so what, how, how should we phrase this? Should it be, are you sure you want um, submissions to be set in the past? Or should it say something different? So first of all, there is no accept submissions deadline in assignments. Um, there's an accept until date. I assume that's what this error message is referring to, but I'm not sure. Um, so whatever it is, it should state whatever the date field is on the page rather than, you know, whatever it's saying now. <laughs> Is this the actual error message text, or is this just like the error? Yeah, that's the actual error. This is the actual accept submissions deadline. Uh -huh. Yeah, here, let me test uh, changing the accept and let me test editing an assignment with an accept until they can pass and see what it says. I thought that it was, but I just wanted to be sure because if there is no accept submission deadline, then it's even. Well, I actually cannot figure out how to get it to trigger the accept until date in the past warning because the due date is always in the past if the accept until date is in the past. And thus I trigger the assignment due date set to be in the past warning. So maybe that message cannot be triggered because they'll always have a due date in the past before hitting that. Let me see what I did. Yeah, so I don't think that message can actually be hit by a user. Because if you set your accept until date in the past, your due date must also be earlier than that. So I think the only one of those two messages you can trigger is due date is in the past. Because whether or not I have my accept until date in the past, um, unless my due date is set after the accept until date, then I trigger accept submissions deadline should be after the due date. So I guess that that message needs to be yeah. fixed. Does it does it ever only. give multiple warnings or does it doesn't always look like just it. it doesn't look like it when it's this particular state. Um, Not entirely sure, but as far as I can tell right now, it's it's not giving me multiple warnings. It's just John is one saying he got multiple. You could just get that on. Um, is it maybe a different server or something that? Uh, oh no! See, because here you're getting except until except submissions deadline after the open date. And after the due date, okay. But it doesn't look like I can trigger the message that says accept submissions deadline set to be in the past. Because if I try to trigger that, then I get the accept submissions deadline before the due date. <laughs> well, I think maybe. Um... If it doesn't, if it's not possible to trigger it, then it's kind of not essential. But just yeah. in case, we can rewrite it to where it makes sense. <laughs> so if yeah. by some weird chance someone does trigger it, um, you know, in a way that we've yeah. not thought of, then at least they're getting a, a message that's intelligible. And, and not yeah. Intelligible. So the the first thing is no more accept submissions deadline, it's accept until date. And I think it should be capitalized because that's what the field is. 
like here I'll put it in the chat. Now Sean, you're saying that you got assignment due date set to be in the past. Which is different than accept submissions deadline. Yeah. But that's why yeah, so I'm asking, you know, what is the actual that's line 19, Wilma, on that page. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. So that's the error I was triggering. So I couldn't okay. get the error at line five because I was always triggering the due date in the past. And then if mm -hmm. I trigger due date in the past, the next oh, error I, I would get okay. is except until submissions needs to be added. So these probably rarely get triggered, which is why they maybe never got fixed. Um, but we can rewrite yeah, but, them just in case. Yeah. Well, the accept sub resubmission, so it's again resubmission accept until date. So the actual field for resubmissions is this. Adam, did you finish pasting those into the Google Doc? Maybe we can work from there. I did. I don't know that there's ne they're necessarily helpful because we did have sections in the Google Doc already with some strings, and so we're getting duplication of strings in the document. Okay. Where in here should we start? So, that so we had a section, a section. Error messages, blockers, warning messages, non-blocking messages, and then down below there's strings with the word click, which is a way to focus okay. in. Um, so let's rewrite one of these areas, but we should decide which one so that we're not working in multiple spots. Yeah, I think we decided that anything that would require you to click the button again was going to be a blocker. Is that what we decided as a group? Well, well right are, now they all are. are. Yeah, yeah, it should be a warning, but oh, it's me. working yeah. like a blocker. Yeah. I think different people may have issues with different things too. For instance, um, original button. And I you know yeah. Tiffany brought up that you don't know necessarily what the original button is. It's post in my implementation, but it could be something else in someone else's. So the well, program. No, have... it's there there are three buttons at the bottom of the page for an already posted assignment, post preview and cancel. Preview can also trigger the error message. <laughs> So, so okay, if you so want that's to, what they said. Yeah. So, so really, we can say something better than original button. Please yeah, click that's post what, to commit your change. Yeah. Yeah. Please that, make a correction so, to continue or, or something. Could be the save draft button though too. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why it's got original problem. button. Yeah. yeah uh. that, that's why it needs to have those strings split out and and have the button specified in each one in each case whatever you've just clicked it needs to know to tell you you know click post again well we um okay so we're talking about kind of two two levels of of changes um i think we should make the text level change so that it would work um with multiple buttons but it's a little less then click on the original button. Um, and then also we can propose splitting them out. But I think splitting them out into separate things is going to be a whole nother level of changes. So let's start with the easy one, which is the text change. Yeah, it's funny that you also... say the easy one text change because my colleagues and I have tried multiple times to think of a better way to word it and have given up. <laughs> on several occasions, <laughs> actually, because we've tried to fix it locally, and th there's really no good way to fix that. <laughs> well, you can't <laughs> fix it, so it by telling people what button, because we don't know if they clicked post uh, preview or cancel. Those are the three options currently, right? Well, cancel won't trigger any message because it just takes you. It just cancels. So. You know, it so fails they're either anything. clicking post or preview. If it's an already posted assignment, 
if it's not posted yet, then it's post preview or draft, I think. Um, and none of them are perceived, right? No, none of them is perceived. Could we say, please make a correction to proceed? Well, I mean, the point of these particular messages is that they don't need to make a correction. I mean, that, that's the whole problem. They're, they're warnings, but they're perceived as blockers because they're red messages that don't allow the user to save without clicking something else again. Yeah, th those are the FYI messages that they can ignore, like, okay, I set the due date in the past. Yes, because I'm editing a previous assignment to put it in the grade book. So let's see. Um, then we need a if if you would want to. So um, how do how do other tools do it? Past. How do other tools do it? Because I feel like this convention is pretty unique to assignments. So maybe we need to make it more consistent with how our other tools do it. Anyone well, think the of other examples? tools usually know what button you clicked. <laughs> to trigger the error message, right? Like, tests and quizzes triggers most errors on its settings page by trying to publish the assessment. So there's a limited, there's only like one button that'll trigger it. <laughs> so instead of the original button, because assignments is unique and has two buttons that could trigger this uh, error if you were saving a draft or posting, does it make sense to specify both buttons? Please click save draft or post to commit your change. Because in the absence of breaking out two error messages, which is going to be programming, we could just take the path of least resistance and explicitly specify both buttons and the user is only going to see one in any case. But the problem is we haven't split out these keys to be different in the draft assignment versus the published assignment. So Here's that needs question. to happen first too, to even make the presence of the save draft button possible. For these warning messages, the ones that are not blockers, but for what, sort of FYI, do they need to be triggered for saving a draft? Can someone save a draft without those warnings, let them stay in a draft with those, you know, status, and then only trigger these warnings when they actually try to publish that draft? That's an interesting idea. Yeah, so that, I like that. Because then, then we can just eliminate the what button did they click because we only care about these conditions when they're actually posting. Yeah, currently that that error that message is triggering on save draft too. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting is we yeah. sort of eliminate these warnings on the drafts, let someone save a draft with the deadlines in the past without caring. Yep, that's what tests and quizzes does. Yeah. And so, then so, only, only when they go to publish it does it say, hey, are you sure you want to have the deadlines in the past? Are you sure you want, you know, no instructions, whatever the, they're the, This is going to be glib, but we don't need to save someone from doing something stupid if they're just editing some, a draft. It's only when you yeah. post an assignment that we need to safeguard their actions. Yes. Yeah. I, I like agree. that. I like that a lot. Yay. I hope somebody wrote that down. Did somebody take a note on that? <laughs> One, maybe? Did anybody write that down? OK, guys. So, okay, so that at least eliminates part of the issue. Yeah, and I think that when you're hitting preview, if you hit, because I'm looking at a published assignment where I'm trying to do one of these things and triggering the error on hitting preview, it actually doesn't work if you hit preview a second time. Like, 
Oh no, now it did. Finally it did. It's just so weird. There's an edit and done button. After you've previewed, there's an edit and done button and they both do the same thing. So that's dumb. <laughs> So if we're taking the approach that we only have to worry about error messages when posting, can we mm -hmm. edit these messages with an idea that this is dedicated to posting? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think saying something like, um, your accept until date is currently in the past. Are you sure you'd like to continue? If yes, select post again or something like or that. Or click post to commit your change. I don't like the word click because of accessibility, but okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. I, actually, I would like to include the word scroll to the bottom of the page and click post again, because that's another part of the problem problem is they're they think they're stopped from doing this <laughs> um maybe i mean maybe, it would be wording the post button at the top when we've got a warning i mean just just to throw a monkey wrench into it when it's got a warning yeah. like that so there'll be a, a post button at the top too well, what about not even bothering with a post button? Just make it a link. So are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And you click it <laughs> as part I of the error message. That, that, that's just about idiot proof. Yeah, I think, and that would be better for the accessibility too, because then you don't have to scroll anywhere. You don't have to think about it. Just, yes, post. <laughs> yeah, are, are you sure you want to continue? Yes or change? Yeah. Well, and then in the error message, we could say your assignment due date is in the past and your change has not been saved yet. Are you sure you want to save? Yes, oh, no. I like that. I like that. So, so, somebody write that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if we do it as a comment with a suggest edit here? Why is my suggest edit not coming up? That's not. We could crowdsource it with comments in the Google Doc. Adam, you can put it in the top in the, the discussion area. Where is the discussion area? Oh, sorry, in this kind of meeting notes area here. Put your name in the table, meeting notes. One was left, so the screen's not updating, but if you look at the document, I put your name. Oh, well, I was actually going to put each with the respective error message below, so that way it would be in line with what we're recommending to change. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you can just put bullets underneath of those then, and that'll make it stand out. So it's it's not submission deadline, it's accept until date. Sorry. I think yes, no is not an acceptable link text because out of context it makes no sense. Um, so maybe yes, post. And you don't need a no, right? Because if if they're on that page already, they can um, scroll down to that setting they can and scroll down. Make sure to save your change. I mean, I, I'm remembering the infamous Windows dialog: yes, no, and cancel. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I'd like for the pop-up kind of thing. It's like a yes post or whatever. Um, but I think when it's not its own dialogue and it's just on the page 
there's potential for confusion of link text out of context, right? Um, I think it's adequate to just capitalize except until because that's what the field name is. Um, that's what I did with some of the tests and quizzes messages, just capitalizing them to match the field. Wordsmithing. Yeah. Um, so what do we want to say in order to have somebody commit their change? Scroll down and what click about, post again or put a link? Well, I mean, I think I'd like a link just at the top of the page. They don't have to think about it. But um, if that's not possible, um, what about saying something like, um, if you're sure you'd like to save, um, or you may make edits below or confirm saving and then with the link confirm saving like that confirm my changes or confirm my settings? I don't think we usually call them settings here. Yeah, we don't. Confirm, confirm posting. Why does that button say post on it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's been my concern for a while, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it to be like create assignment when you're creating it or save when you're editing. I think, well, yeah, I think we're going to get rid of cl click too, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, how about you can correct this or confirm with confirm being link to save with those settings? Confirm by clicking here. We, we sh you should not need to say click here. I mean, yeah. that's, that, that's yeah. bad. B bad, bad. I mean, I did a quick search for the word click because it exists throughout. But then the question is, what action are they taking to commit the change? You're confirming posting the assignment, right? So, or confirm right. posting the assignment. One may not know that that means click post again. Who is clicking? I mean, if make I that. would say, you know, if if we can't make this message linked, I would say, um, or scroll down to the bottom of the page and select post again. Maybe we really should see if we can improve this workflow. I don't know if other tools do it better, but. I, I think I feel like the biggest problem is this workflow is just not good. How it yep. it just prompts yeah, you. It's and it's super annoying. And there's and there's, it, there's it fields in there. You. There's fields in there that are marked as required, but they're really not. They're just like required until you click, you know, twice. And like yep. it's, the instructions are like the one thing that always I always click twice through because I don't care about putting the instructions in. So it always alerts mm -hmm. you about it. And half the time I ignore the error message just because I want to hurry up and. And get something the in there, yeah. I want to put the yeah. title in there, and I just post it. I'm like, I don't care about the instructions; just get it in there. And but yeah, it's like, um, I don't know if any other Sakai tools do this better, but it feels like I I agree. It should just had something that's like more, you know, that you can just get through it faster. And I mean, couldn't there be like a Are you sure you want to do this? And if you hit yes, it saves it without you having to scroll down. You know. Well, th that's exactly yeah. why I suggested doing it as a pop-up alert, where you don't 
have to think about it. It just pops up, says, hey, you know, reminder, your students already submitted, some students already submitted this. You sure you want to change it now? And yes, I'm sure because I'm extending the due date, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. The, the way the tool is designed with Velocity, it's possible it may need to actually, you know, submit it and then come back to the page and then show you the pop-up. But then it could show you the pop-up instead of showing you this alert bar and then allowing you to like if you click on the pop-up say okay or whatever the or the whatever the modal then you could then it would just go through it and you wouldn't have to have to worry about it figuring out what you need to do again if you click cancel then you'd have to like fill in what you need i guess but, yeah when i originally read the ticket that you proposed the the pop-up in tiffany um i i was concerned about it um because i'm not a fan of modals blocking context um but as we've had this discussion, I, I see that there is a need for some sort of confirmation here that is a little bit more in your face or that I, I still am concerned about modals because in order to, for some people to um, review or make that decision that you're asking them, you're, you're essentially blocking the context that they might need to reference in order to be able to make that decision. So if we could do it in a non-blocking way, then it might be a better alternative while still prompting them and making it efficient for them. I, I, I think efficiency is key because if it, it may block the focus of what's generating the error, but if they know the error when initially clicking post, then they're just going to plow through it. But making them scroll to the bottom again is a poor user experience. It sounds like we need to have a button come up that just says proceed or something. Uh, we should have a button. This is original button and a pop up or an alert. <laughs> so it's like the original button. You just click it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Um, it, it, I don't want to go on a tangent because I, I feel like we're making headway. But has anybody ever used the Easter egg in Firefox about robots? When you click about robots, it brings up a robot with description and it gives you a button saying, please don't click this button. You click it and it says, you know, I told you not to click the button. You click it again and they take away the button. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we could do that. We could have like if it's a non blocking thing that says that has this thing, please click the button, then we could pop probably bring something up. But. Um, I don't know how much effort that would take. We have to. I don't know if the back end knows like what things are actually optional, but we could look at that. I, yeah, I think that making it so you don't have to scroll it down to the bottom is what people really want. We need to give them a button. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I would have to say probably nine out of ten times I encounter this message, I'm going to scroll to the bottom. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and I think, but the other piece of that is our users don't know they can, right? You know, it's it's not clear to the user that they can skip through this this error message or blocker. You know, it looks to them like a blocker. We've had a lot of emails from users that said, you know, hey, I, I'm trying to save my due date to make it later or something like that, and I keep getting this message, why can't I save my due date to be later? And they well, what's, what's good about what we've discussed is we've taken away these errors when doing drafts and at least the initial error message that we're trying to modify is telling people that their changes aren't saved, why they're not saved, and telling them what they need to do next. Mm -hmm. So I feel that that's yeah. all for the win. Would it yeah. be possible um, to Go ahead and save the change and then just give a confirmation that says your due dates are in the past. If you want to change this, go back and edit. That makes sense to me. I think it where would that appear, uh, Wilma? Sorry, Adam. Like you would you would make your changes and then you would hit post. And so, and it posts, it saves them, even if it triggered some of these warnings. But then the next thing that you see is a message that says, your due date is in the past, because um, it already saved it, right? Um, if this is, if you need to change this, go back to edit or something to that effect. But so basically, you're like, you're back on the mute. 
Yeah, it saves it and you just get a little confirmation hmm. showing you what you saved um, without making you go through it again. Because like we said, I mean, nine times out of 10, you're going to want to do that action again anyway. You're going to ignore that warning. So why make people force them to, to resave every single time? Why not just make them go back and edit if they didn't mean to save? I think it's going to depend on the error message of whether or not mm -hmm. you can commit on their behalf, because one of the errors had to do with associating a um, assignment to a pre-existing grade in the gradebook and the fact that that might do grade overriding. That seems like it might be a blocker. That seems like a bug to me. It shouldn't allow you to associate to an assignment that's you're going to be overwriting something. In. Let me see if I can find that text because I saw it earlier while I was looking at the documents that uh, Sean generated. Is it in one of the click? I didn't see it in the click group which surprised me i mean one of the the big um warnings that frustrates users is that one where it warns you about your grade being greater than the maximum point value and no other tool warns for that i don't know why that even you know poses a problem because gradebook doesn't care it just tells you that you're giving extra credit Testing quizzes doesn't care. It lets you give extra credit. <laughs> okay, the reason this wasn't here, I'm, I'm sorry, I was distracted, but I put this under error message blockers because uh, it actually is a string without the word click. You were trying to associate this assignment with an already associated gradebook item and scores might be overridden. Do you want to continue? So it shouldn't allow you to associate an assignment with a gradebook item that has been associated with something else. Um, that was a big problem in the past, and I thought that was fixed to prevent users from selecting assignments that have already been associated to, or items that have already been associated to other assignments. Well, what if it was a grade that was a manual grade in the gradebook, and then you associate the assignment to that grade? If, the if grade was meant, never associated with anything. In this case, According to this error message, you are attempting to associate the assignment with a gradebook item that is associated to something else, not yeah. with a gradebook item that contains grades. Yeah. So I mean, if this error message is, written. yeah, if this error message is what it states, then it should not be triggerable <laughs> anymore. It used to be back in the past that you could associate multiple assignments to the same gradebook item and you'd have problems uh, for that reason, where you'd overwrite the grade with whichever was the last entered grade. Uh, but I thought that was fixed. That, that seems like something that should not be allowed. Yeah. That it line was added fixed. to this file in SAK 40757 it in the chat it's from 2018-2019 period. Is that where it was fixed? Fixed for 12, 19, and 20. I'm not sure if anything has changed since then. That no longer requires that. Yeah, so here they're, they're saying they associated the same item yeah. to two assignments. Yeah, so this, this should no longer be possible because now when you go to the associate drop down, all items that are already associated to other things should be grayed out and not selectable. So we don't have to worry about that error message. Okay. Yeah, now it, if there is no way, to, I, I don't think there would be any way for assignments to detect on this page whether a gradebook item has grades previously entered. Um, but in order to push the grades to the gradebook, you must release them anyway. So you can't like just by the act of associating, you won't overwrite grades. Um, you will only overwrite them when you go into the grade page and release them. 
So I'm not sure that it's that much of a problem to allow association to an already to an item with some grades already entered because additional action must be taken to send grades to that item. So, that so, we, got, so we got on this tangent or got on this direction because of Wilma's suggestion that we commit throw a warning and let the user know that their changes were saved, but it's a little unusual. Um, it seems to me, though, that more time is going to need to be spent in order to go through each error condition and determine whether or not saving is appropriate given the error condition or warning condition. Yeah, I think, I mean, rather than kicking them back to the main page of assignments if we were going to commit a change for one of these messages i would prefer that they stay on you know be returned to the same page and say your your changes were successfully saved however there are submissions to this assignment um you know you may wish to change the due date i don't know whatever it is, uh, whatever the condition is that has caused that message to appear. And then we can make it the yellow warning message instead of a red one because their changes would have already been saved successfully, but there may be something they want to address still. Does that make sense? I think so. I, I mean, I like the idea of going ahead and saving it because it it seems like the most common action is to ignore the warning. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. And uh, that would make it easier for people to save and less likely to not save and lose their change. Because if they don't notice that it didn't save and they just immediately go somewhere else without reading the warning. I think that makes sense. And and then we could change the color of those affected warnings. So, you know, if you save your assignment without instructions, for example, um, you know, save it anyway, but then keep you on that edit page with the yellow warning at the top that says your your assignment was saved, but there's no instructions you know, you may wish to add some <laughs> and save it again or something like that. Yeah, something that just kind of highlights at the top with like a little green check saying your changes were saved. Then underneath, you know, however, your deadlines are in the past. If you wish to make changes, please below. I apologize, but I had a hard stop, so I'm going to have to drop off, but I really appreciate the discussion and uh, being able to participate. Thank you for your feedback. Yeah, appreciate it. And thanks for searching for the messages for us. Thanks. Oh, yeah, that was very yeah. helpful. <laughs> yeah, Take care you. and have a great day. You too. Okay, thanks. You too. What if we try to get rid of some of the messages? Reduce the number yeah. of warnings. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of them in here that don't seem to be relevant. Like, do we have to even warn them that the deadline's in the past? <laughs> Maybe that yeah, is a good idea. I, I, I personally don't <laughs> think Honestly, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, tests and quizzes doesn't care. Discussions doesn't care. Privates is the only one that cares. <laughs> I, I don't think it's needed. I think it's. It, it's not it's like the instructor annoying. can't easily see that an assignment date is in the past when they're back on the list and go in and say, whoops, I accidentally didn't change the year from 2021 to 2022. Let me go back in there and fix that. Yeah, I, I like just killing the message because, yeah, so what? They saved it in the past. No student can take it. Someone will let them know if they forgotten. So as a part of the new UI um, work that, I, that I'm working on with Michael and, and EDF and, and the community, um, one of the things that I started doing oh, last year or two years ago was to compile a 
Sakai UI forms best practices document. And um, I, okay, I guess I can share it. Um, I haven't published this in the community yet because I was still trying to finish it up and change it. But it was a, and I, I also want to produce a, um, a shorter version. But uh, the document that I just linked off the chat was, it is essentially my my research document of of it, and um, I've divided it into design decisions, including layout, labels, um, inputs, da 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 da. And um, one of the sections is feedback messages, and there are some interesting points in there that might be applicable to this discussion. Um, for example, there is. Um, to use human language to explain what has happened and why it is happening. Um, everything else is useless. <laughs> uh, use errors inline rather than displaying at the top. Dynamic validation, reward early and punish late. And then be conservative in what you do, be liberal in what you accept from others. So maybe some of these types of guiding suggestions and principles, and I've linked most of the uh, sources of all this stuff underneath the points, um, are. Uh, or something that we can consider. Yeah, well, the allow lots of leeway and what the user can input would seem applicable here. Um, punish late, that's also applicable. So I say we get rid of all the due date warnings that stop you. Warn for problems that like, okay, your accept until date is before your due date or, you know, dates are backwards, but no, no warnings yeah. for things being just in the past. Right. Well, the, the due date or before the open date, I think is a blocking, right? It's not yes. a warning message. Yeah. It's, it's in another category. Yeah. So um, you, know, you can't set due dates earlier than open dates. You can't set right. accept until dates earlier than due dates. So I was just talking about these, the ones that are more warning-ish. Yep. I don't think we need them. That makes sense to me. Okay. I mean, there's also one about submissions existing when you want to change stuff. And I don't, I don't remember what message that is. You know, if a student well, already why don't, has- Why don't we mark that, off kind of one by one? So this one here, the this is a due date related. So I'm just going to do a strike through. Unless anyone objects. It's also deadline in the past. in the past. Close, click to open assignment instruction. That one. I'm not sure what that's for. That that might be when you're viewing the assignment instructions. I don't think that's a warning. I think it just I don't had think click that's in an it. alert. Yeah, it's Take that I don't one think out that's of our related. List. Yeah. Um, an item, yeah, I don't think that's part of the list either. Yeah. Okay, this grade entered is one. larger. I think that and should go away. That's when you're saving a grade uh, to give extra credit, basically. I've always thought that. I'd be in favor of that. What do the rest of you think? No, no other tool gives a warning when you do that. It just puts the little color and plus icon in the grade book. No, we don't like this one either. What What about What about um, changing this to a non-blocking warning? So, like adding a little "Hey, you just gave extra credit" text on the page next to your field. This line isn't applicable to the page that we're talking about, though, right? This is yeah, a grading this is page. Grade. This is a yeah, grade so grade. let's skip that for this discussion. I think it's out of scope. Oh, OK. I'll take it out of the list. File a new ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <a> different one. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there, Tiffany. <laughs> the catch there, though. Uh, 
but I think it's uh, I, I think it's an interesting discussion to have, but I think it's out of scope scope in this one. These may be also what is this? That's great. Um, yeah, stuff, that's yeah. grading. That one next one's grading too, I think. Yeah, those are all grading. I mean, I think I had a comment in that ticket or part of that ticket that said, you know, similar things may need to be done for other pages. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Assignment has no instructions. Okay, that one's yeah, on. That uh, one. Do we want to let people save without instructions? Yeah. I think that, yeah, that for that one, I think it should be non-required field. Like other tools don't require descriptions and stuff. I don't think it's good practice. <laughs> iPad instructors have their detailed assignment descriptions in the syllabus or in lessons. So. Or in an attached Word doc. Like, yeah. yeah. So having to fill out that text field or click through the warning is just a frustration. Yeah. Plus, I mean, maybe you just want a placeholder. You're going to come back later and fill the instructions. I've done that before. <laughs> we'll just put placeholder. Lesson. Well, no, if I'm making like a lesson page and I want to put assignment one, but I don't want to write out all of assignment one. I just want to put assignment one on my lesson page and come back to it later. But we'll just put default. It will make it a required field, but we'll just put default text that is like, you know, your instructor <laughs> gave you no instructions. <laughs> I just leave it plain. Well, the, the funny thing is that if the instructor attaches a file, the document that has instructions, it still comes up with that message. And then they get confused. They're like, hey, I had all my instructions, but it says I don't have instructions. <laughs> I mean, ideally, they would type in, see the attachment, but. <laughs> That's a grading page alert. All okay, Lowry submission instruction. I don't think that's on the settings page, is it? No, I think that's on the assignments by student, maybe. Let me see. Yeah, those are those blue panels that open up on the grading page, right? Yeah. Okay, so both because that's that table that below. Is... Yeah. Um, this is like a good trivia quiz, eh? <laughs> yeah. Is it Can you tell from the error from the error message? Where it comes from? <laughs> Name that page. <laughs> yeah, those are not um, related. We're we're narrowing these down really. Well. <laughs> All right. That scoring agent yeah. reminder is for like um, LTI tools. Uh, um, are you ready to submit? None of those apply. So the only ones that actually fall into our rapidly narrowing <laughs> category messages. are ones yeah. that we want to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, all the warning messages, just get rid of them. Yeah. Was, was that last message you deleted just said grading dot dot dot? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the uh, message that appears on the page when you're grading with an LTI tool like uh, iRubric. Okay. So so it's it's a little there's like a little dialogue when you're grading an assignment with an iRubric rubric um, that has that text there, and if you click on the click here link, it pulls in the grade from iRubric. Oh, okay. It, it's an LTI. Yeah, it's definitely not part of our group. So, so yeah, I think we actually simplified it quite, 
question. <laughs> do, we, do we miss anything else we want to get rid of while we're at it? <laughs> <laughs> How to fix this ticket? <laughs> Delete all the messages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when well, we when when you have a when when you edit an assignment that's um, already open, then you get the alert that is you are revising an assignment after the open date. So there are those types of messages that we guess we could discuss. They're kind of outside the scope okay. of the initial ticket, I think, because I think your concern with, um, in the ticket, Tiffany, right, was the more the the actions, the the posting, yeah. the clicking. Um, That's correct. Yeah, we could. So this There's is kind of outside the. Yeah, those alerts that appear at the top of the page, I think we could certainly make them yellow instead of red, because like right now they're those red alerts. So yeah, they're, they're listed as errors, but they're just yeah, warnings. they're listed yes. like errors, but they're just alerts, like yeah. reminders, like hey, some students submitted. Are you sure you want to edit this now? Yeah, that's because um, I believe it's because assignments doesn't have a versatile alert system. Everything was just alerts back in the day, and then when mm -hmm. we split it into errors and warnings, uh, more work is needed to differentiate between Section those. Section of those levels. fall into. I can paste the exact message in the chat for you. Actually, or I can search for it. <laughs> uh, 517 is where that one was from. But I see other ones that aren't. Revising a grade. Well, here's right, some... Revising assignment activity. Those um, just kind of pop up at the top, and but they let you continue what you're doing, right? Yeah. I'm not sure what this top alert in this one that I just have att assignment attempt to submit after acceptance of. I don't know what that even means. I'm looking at my Maybe. assignment. Where did you find that? Was it in this list? I was editing. No, I was just editing an assignment in one of my sites that has. And I see an accept. I have an accept until date. I don't see anywhere on the page that that. Is related because I don't allow resubmission. What's the name of your assignment? <laughs> oh, that's the name of the assignment. You're right. Duh. <laughs> I think it's saying <laughs> the assignment called attempt to right. submit, right? You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're, right. You're right. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, so it's that's alerting you that it has submissions. Yeah. It has submissions. Right. right. Assignment has submissions. Yeah. It'd be nice if they like quoted the name of it, but. Mm hmm. Asking for well, it, it's I'm the only person who would do an assignment aid, something like that, because I was testing for a bug apparently that had to. Does do your it. assignment start with assignment, or does it put assignment for that right after alert? Let me. What's the name of your assignment? It, it, it actually the assignment, is assignment attempt, one. attempt to submit ex after accept until is the name of the assignment. Yeah, so if you it's named it assignment one, assignment. then it would have say yeah. assignment assignment one, like twice. Let me see. Hold on, let me. I don't have an assignment one that has uh, that has a submission. So let me edit one of my assignments to tell you. Don't forget to click post twice. <laughs> Renaming an assignment so I can see if it says assignment assignment. It does. It does indeed. I'm in assignment one has submissions. That's a little annoying. It should put that in quotes. Or the assignment named assignment one. Oh, that comes the from line 291. Titled. What? Line 291 of the file has that. Assignment. Yeah, right there. Has some. Yeah. The, the key is has some, not has sub. Ooh. It's silent. <laughs> Yeah, 
What about inserting the word name? Because it might be one of those strings that you can't put quote marks in. I encountered some of those in tests and quizzes. Assignment named or assignment titled? Like assignment titled. Yeah, I guess it is title. So the assign. What about the assignment titled? Yeah, assignment that would one. be less redundant sounding. It's if this message only appears on the page when you're editing the assignment, then it could just be this assignment. That is true. Yeah. Hopefully you're not editing multiple assignments at the same time. <laughs> it does say the title above the alert. I mean, that is the page header. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the more that we can simplify the language and, and make it shorter, less is more, <laughs> the yeah. better. Yeah, we need to go through all of the messages <laughs> the whole system. And, and I like this assignment because, you know, we have these alerts. You are revising an assignment after the open date. I'm, assigned, I'm revising this one after the open date. Yeah. yeah. Not just an assignment, this specific assignment right here. Okay, I haven't been keeping track of all these suggestions. I think we should start writing some of them down. I don't know where we want to put them. We're getting quite a list. Um, we can keep putting them in the document, and then we can transfer to them to the tickets later if we want. Yeah, so let's. Uh, these, we just want to have the assignment, right? Other changes? <laughs> well, these are like the little messages that appear when you're editing just at the top of the page they're not like blockers or anything but they're currently in red so it would be better if they could be in yellow or maybe even the blue like note instead of making them look alert like you know note you're revising an assignment after the open date note you're revising an assignment with submissions Yeah, I feel like they're more warnings, but they, I don't know. They're, I don't want every page to be like yellow, uh, have yellow banner or have warning banners all over the place. Well, a yellow banner would be better than the red. Yeah. There's something else besides, I know there were more that we talked about. Uh, 291 was that where that other one was? I don't know about those someone um, else is editing this assignment. I we should probably figure out where exactly that is and how it is triggered because and what the zero is in those strings because I'm not so sure we'd want to take out whatever the zero is in that string. It may not be the I think assignment. That's just title. the name of the assignment, right? Um, that was just I'm, the title. I'm not sure because zero can mean any number of things depending on the location of the system. Okay, so we want to leave them alone then? Is that other possible? Yeah, unless we, figure out, unless we figure out what they are, where they are appearing, um, I don't think we should mess with them. I'd, I'd just remove those from the list because I, I don't think take them out completely yeah unless we can determine what exactly they're for and what the zero string is there so this one this was line two nine, this one's the title that one alone this is the one so we this wanted to take out the zero yeah this we wanted to change it from assignment name to this assignment has submissions
in the uh, lowercase How do we want to assignment. indicate that? This lowercase assignment. They're just because it's it's appearing on the top of the edit page. So I'm just trying to figure out how we want to indicate it in our file. Oh, I, I would just leave has some and change it to the new text. When I do, um, hold on, I can show you a Jira where I do some replacement strings. I was putting the key. And, okay. Um, so I just, I left out the old text. Then. Or I could put it in there just to show the change. I just want to make it so somebody glancing at this can figure out what it was we were suggesting to change. I'll put the original in there with it. So here's a here's a juror where I did a, a string replacement for a particular string. I've been basically just listing the key. So were there any others besides 291? Um, there's the, you are revising an assignment after the open date. You are revising an assignment after the due date. You're revising this assignment after the open date, maybe, and capitalize open date and due date since those are the field names. Which line is that? Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking at the text of the messages in assignments. Okay. Are Here, I can I can paste them in the chat. Revising assignment after. All right, so we wanted it to read what? You're revising this assignment after the due date and capitalized due date because that's a field. And the same thing, you're revising this assignment after the open date. You are revising this assignment after the open date. And capitalize open date since that's the field name. Just to try to make it a little clearer that these are things you could edit. Right. I think the open date is the 20. Yeah. And 17 would be due date. Um, any others? Really quickly. So going back to that, someone else is editing this assignment. Um, line 403. I don't see that key being used anywhere. <laughs> it's not Thank in the assignments you. project. Huh. That might be the grade book item then. Well, it's editing, though, not grading. Yeah, but Gradebook also uses the word assignment in some places. So I don't know if that's Gradebook or Gradebook Classic. If it's not in the assignments. Well, product, but this is know. in the assignment properties. Oh, it is. File. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
know. It might and be another think, one of those um, like LTI esque tools that has its own code in Sakai. I think it's supposed to prevent if you're editing and another instructor in the same course is also editing to prevent people from overwriting each other's changes. But it, are you saying it's not in there anymore, John? I haven't been able to find it yet. No. I wonder if it's something that was in there before, or maybe. This line was added 12 years ago. Yeah, so this might just be an artifact from like before Earl rewrote the assignments back end or something. Yeah. Well, there are lots of artifacts of text strings everywhere. I'm finding that a lot um, working with Message Bundle Manager. Okay, so all three, all four of these, 403, 405, 407, and 409, are all of these no longer in use? I just tested the first one so far. I've expanded my search to the whole thing, but I haven't found it yet. But maybe that can go under the category as of somebody needs to go through this file and remove all the extra yeah. messages. So. And then there was that one that we couldn't figure out how to trigger that was like you're revising the assignment after the late submission date or something. Because I would always trigger the due date one instead. Um, didn't Sean say he was able to get it to have multiple errors? Yeah, but I, I don't think I was able to trigger the one that Tiffany is referring to. I, I just said that I was able to do multiple be, to indicate that it was possible somehow, just not necessarily okay. with that so specific that's one. That's when we need to check on what's, what's either the line number or part of the text that I'm searching. I don't remember what it was called because it wasn't except until date. It was giving. It was the one at the top, right? It was near the top, I think. Wasn't it one of those first ones that start with like A C E or something? Except. Remember what the the string. Except submission deadline set in the past. Except resubmission deadline. Is that the ones we're talking about? Those ones at the top. Yeah, Please? I think it was the except submission deadline in the past. Yeah. Number five was the one I couldn't I figure out how to trigger. I'll just put this on under may not be in use. Check on it. <laughs> But I guess those were all kind of the category of ones we don't want to trigger anymore, right? The the ones that are warning. Oh yeah, about that's things. true. Because we were going to get rid of all of those. Yeah. I'll, I'll it. But these that are being used, we no longer want them to trigger. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> that one I can't find in assignments either. Interesting. So, maybe there was a previous concurrent editing alert that got removed. Oh, sorry. Which one are you guys were just talking about? The ones that you were searching for, right? Weren't those the ones, the concurrent editing alerts? Like, oh, sorry. No, I, yeah. I just searched for line five. I just searched for line five now. But yeah, I, oh. I haven't found any of those other ones. Or the, I haven't found the first of the other one anywhere in Sakai, so I don't know where it's. I think it's been removed. I searched for the assignment one, underscore assignment there. The first one doesn't. I, I haven't finished searching for the rest yet. So um, back to our original 
have <laughs> these strings that we've we've um, decided no longer need to be in there at all. Um, the warnings that block people. So who wants to update the ticket with our kind of bind decision on that? Dawn, you want to do that? Or you want me to do that? Happy to do it for you guys. Yeah, if you don't mind, that'd be awesome. Um, if not, I can do so it. I'll, I'll update um, JIRA, the original JIRA, with these lines and say that these types of warnings we don't think are at all. Certainly shouldn't block the user from saving. So they should just be removed from both draft and posting an assignment. So is this the right decision to make? Um, well, that's what we're proposing. I can put that. That's what machine learning and UX propose, and then see if if anyone wants to object, they could certainly do so on the Jira. Maybe we can put a message out on the listserv. I can do that too. After I update the Jira, I will post a message to the user list just to get a few more eyes on it. To make sure everyone's okay with this. If they have any objections, they can check in the comments. Okay, great. And so the JIRA might need to be split out into several then because this is a set of strings that we want to remove and no longer trigger. But I think the problem of the messages not being accessible is still an issue that needs to be addressed separately. Right. Okay. What I'll do then instead, I'll put a comment letting people know, but then I'll, in the comment, I'll state that we opened a new JIRA. And I'll change the JIRA. I think that makes sense. And maybe update the existing one to to not include these strings or, I don't know, something to right. clarify which one's which. So for the blocker one, uh, Tiffany, like the ones, the, the, the messages that show up there the air like real errors i guess you could say um do we want to just go with the alert uh, the roll alert uh, method is would that I mean, address I that think, would they just mean i think i would prefer hold on let me find that form there was a form best practices that i was using from uh um the wicked three find it because i really like the ones where it places your focus in the affected field and places the warning next to the affected field um, yeah, that's how a lot of web forms work you know they, they take you to the area where they, I mean, they highlight it in some way that's you know both visible and um, announced by the screen reader to let people ideally know where the problem it would hit is. Yeah, it would hit the error ideally before you even get to the save button, right? So it would say, hey, your due date's before your accepted till date, fix it now. <laughs> you know, yeah. don't wait till you get down to the bottom of the page and save, just trigger the error on losing focus from the field. Yeah, inline validation rather, or dynamic yeah. inline validation versus right. post <laughs> validation. Exactly. Yeah. That wasn't the right thing. Um, what was the one that I was looking for? Yeah, I've always wondered about taking uh, or putting focus in certain fields. I've always wondered if that is a best practice or not, because it can be disorienting. And I, I, I'll have to test that with Chris to see how, uh, how JAWS reacts with that. Let me find, because we did the one in tests and quizzes for that, um, that, uh, what was it, the numeric response alert. Uh, Mitch redid that one, and we um, we had Chris test that, and it worked well. Um, numeric response, the validation alert. 
where we put it in line on leaving focus from the field. Um, Trying to find that because I had the link to that help article from W3C there. Yeah, here it is. This is what I'm thinking of doing the notification on focus change rather than um, doing the notification on um, submit. So, which notifications are you? The, the date notifications, the warning, due date is later, the, due date is earlier than open date, except until date is earlier than due date, except until date is earlier than open date, those, those kinds of date warnings that are blockers. Um, those are the ones where I'd like to see the focus go into the first affected field upon triggering the error, or better yet, have the error trigger before you save, the ones that, that prevent you from saving. I, mean, I don't I want to know that it's smart enough. With that. I mean, I think the That's existing JIRA could be edited to be that if we're changing those other alerts to be. Uh, the other alerts, I'm going to open a new JIRA for them. Yeah. If we want to get rid right. Of no, that's what I mean. But the original was the one, particularly the focused ones. on those. Okay. So if you want to just add to the ticket on that. I'm not sure that I'll have the time to work on it anytime soon or potentially ever because we are moving away from Sakai. So, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, I actually have so, to get going right now. Which which here. ones were they again? And I'll try to add them if I can kind of remember what I'm just saying. Uh, the, it was, there was this set that you have yeah so you, you have to here? set the mm -hmm, yeah you have to set okay. the, the um open date after the due date or open date before the due date due date before except until date um, there's a sequence okay. of like three or four dates so all these date ones at the top then I well, know no because the the submissions deadline set in the past those were ones we wanted to take out four and five for example, we want to take those out because those were the ones that weren't blocking. Yeah. Please correct. But like, like nine. These three. Yeah, one, one three, nine. Three, seven and nine. No, not seven. Um, one, three, oh, and nine. Sorry. One, three, and nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I will, I'll try to update the ticket with that as well. Hopefully, I remember everything. Now I'm going to actually. <laughs> so, if right, I forget I something and you happen to see it, um, feel free to comment. Thanks for having me. Thanks I for did. bringing this up, Tiffany, and, and thanks for your yeah. input today. And um, thanks, everybody, for your feedback. I think this was a good discussion. I think there's more that needs to be done, um, but uh, I think this is a great start. Yeah, we definitely made some headway. Right. I'm. See you. Bye. Is that everything for today then? I think so. I okay. didn't have any.